Well, good morning, guys. It's Pastor Andy. Today is February the 16th, so we're going to be looking this morning in Psalm 16 together. Psalm chapter 16 is a neat psalm. It's a very personal psalm that David sings in giving praise to God and giving thanks and focusing on the goodness of God in his life. And that's something that all of us as believers should be doing, focusing on the good that God has given us and how good God really is. Because if we're honest, he's been far too good to every single one of us, way better than we deserve. So when you think about this psalm, think about that, think about it in that light of David singing about the goodness of God. He repeats over and over in here. We know it's very personal because he repeats the, the I, me, mine, me uh, pronouns. So he's talking very personally between him and God. He starts off, keep me safe, O God, for I have come to you for refuge. This wasn't a time in David's life when he was being uh, chased or people trying to kill him. What he's saying here when he uses the word safe is it's a need for God's constant care in his life. He realized that no matter in the good times or in the bad, he still needed God's care. And it's so easy for us when things are good for us to forget about God, to not think that we really need God too much in our life. But the truth of the matter is, especially in the good times, we need God. Because in those good times, we can forget him. And if we do that, we're going to live a life of practical atheism, where we live our life like God doesn't exist, like he's not really real. So many times God allows problems, difficulties, trials in our life to help us to stay close to him, to keep us close so that we don't forget him. He says in verse two, I love this phrase, you are my master and here it is, every good thing I have comes from you. Man, that's a realization that every single one of us need too, to understand that every good thing that we have is a gift from God. I, I was talking to somebody the other day who's going through a trial in their life, going through a difficult time, and their question was, why does God let bad things happen to good people? Because they're a church folk, they're good people, they're believers, and I had to look at them honestly and say, you know, you're asking the wrong question. The question is not, why does God let good, bad things happen to good people? The question is, why does God let anything good happen to any one of us? Because none of us are good people. At our core, we're born with a sin nature. The Bible says there's none good. None of us are deserving or worthy of anything good in our life. It's only by the grace and mercy of God that we have anything that's good. And I love how David says it. Every good thing I have comes from you. He realized that God loved him and God cared about him. And God was a giving heavenly father who cared about him. Then it transitions down here in verse 8. It says, I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. David had a realization that God was always there, no matter where he was. Even when it seemed like he was silent and he wasn't there, God is always watching. He's that friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's promised to never leave us and never forsake us, and he is always there. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me, even in the trials and difficulties. I'm not going to let him shake me up or mess me up, because I know God is there. I know God is with me. He's never left me. And then you get down to the end and it talks about heaven. It says, you will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasure of living with you forever. As a believer, the best is yet to come. One day when we step off this earth and step into the presence of God in heaven, we're going to get to spend eternity with him and with Jesus. You know, so many people focus on the good things of heaven, how the streets are paved with gold and all of these great things, and we'll have a mansion, and we'll, you know, God's preparing a place for us, and all of those things. But the truth of the matter is, the best thing about heaven is that we're going to get to spend time with Jesus. Our whole happiness is going to be centered around Him and the fact that we'll be in His presence forever. How awesome is that going to be? One day we're going to get to see the one that we've talked about, the one that we've read about, the one that we've prayed to, the one that we've put our faith and trust in for our salvation. One day, our faith is going to become sight, and we're going to get to see him, and we're going to get to spend eternity with him. Man, that should encourage every single one of us that no matter how difficult or 
no matter what problem we're facing today, it's just a short time. No matter what, it's not going to be here for long. As the Bible says, this too will pass. And what is a few days, a few weeks, a few years, even 80 to 90 years in light of eternity when we get to spend it with Jesus? I encourage you to get in your Bible and read it. Read this psalm. Read about how David talks about even Jesus in this psalm. It's a messianic psalm as well, talking about the Messiah. Get in there, read it, see what God has for you. And if you're a member of Open Door or you attend our church, I'm excited to see you today. We're finishing up our series in the blessed life. And I'm excited about what God's laid on my heart to share with you and what we're going to be doing here in the future. So I'll see you guys in a little while. If you don't attend Open Door, get into your church. Make sure that you're there today. Get into God's word. Be a faithful faithful believer. And if I don't see you today, I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you. Have a great day.